We're very gracious to give us this gift of Old Forester 1910, extra, extra old. They gave us a beautiful 93 proof 1910, extra, extra old as a gift for a no strings attached review as well. Um, if you know me, you know I'm not on the tip of the dirty cop, although my life would be much easier. I prefer to be honest in my reviews. Um, but before we get into this, we're actually going to go for a refresher of the Old Forester 1910 Extra Old. Because I still have a little bit of this left from when Ryan and I reviewed it last time. I want you to hold up that bottle versus this bottle, just real quick for everyone to see. Because, not the oh, bottle the per se, but the color. You can tell... This is like a light caramel, almost like a dark amber honey. This is... Dark burnt wood. Burnt wood. Like, you added too much caramel coloring, uh, beautiful amber, dark caramel, just toasty deliciousness, I'm sure. So. We've already cleansed our palates and yes. up beforehand. I have a, my princess cup. Because he's a princess. I figured everybody would just finish this then today, huh? Might as well. Cheers and the bottoms up. Do we want secondary glasses to have side by side? That would be good. Let me get some of those. Thought you didn't want to clean the extra glasses. Well, you know, I guess I'll give me something to do later today in the rain. <laughs> Thank you to our friends at Brown Foreman, Chris Pointer, and formerly Jim Lake, who's no longer with Brown Foreman, for making this sample of the 1910 extra old uh, possible. And then thank you to Chris for making the 1910 extra extra old possible. We greatly appreciate your help and generosity. And again. Thank you to Ryan for cleaning extra glasses. That too. <laughs> so Ryan over here had a wild night last night and finished off the regular 1910, even though we're supposed to have some today to do a three-way side-by-side comparison. So I started watching 1883, 1923, and finished Yellowstone so far this season. So I was just in this like drinking whiskey, cowboy kind of mood. Um, I'm sorry. And you don't go for the ink break, see the face of a family, Orange County Bottle Society bottle of barrel proof? Hey, you know, it just, it's what it was, and it this went guy. down. But hey, I'm all cleansed up for today. And Cheers, ready to roll. bottoms up, my friend. All right, so the extra, ex, this is the extra old, not the extra Correct, old. this is the extra old, which I believe was an 18, 18 months. months in uh, secondary brand new charred oak barrels. So, so to recap all that, you age it, and then you age it again, and then we're aging it a third time for this, and then we're aging it a fourth time. No. You age it, for 19 you age it, and then you put it into a secondary barrel for a secondary maturation or finishing. Mm -hmm. That's where it stops. Great. For the extra old, for the 1910, for the 1910. Then for the 1910 extra old, you just let that finishing go on longer than usual. I think it's usually like six to eight months or is it 12 months? And then, and then we're adding, basically we're going up to 18 months. 18 months. Secondary. And then for the XX old, that's 24 months <laughs> in that secondary barrel. Got it. But this is a heavily charred uh, secondary barrel as well. Yes, the whole 1910 series does use heavily charred secondary barrels. So I get a really nice um, hint of butterscotch right on the nose. I get a lot of flour. Uh, right on my tongue too at the very front, just like. It's like like a, like a candy. Just, mm. I see the butterscotch, but for me, it's not butterscotch like candy. It's more like a butterscotch. It's almost like a flan. You can see that, yeah, like a, like a creamy dessert. I'm yeah. Gonna, I'm sure we'll, all right, I'm gonna save that last little bit for when we come back around. Almost like a dulce de leche, but not that sweet yet. That's just so delicate and approachable. It's kind of minty too, which is nice. Yeah, there's a little mint there. It's like that cooling refreshingness that you get. I will also hold my rest of my sample until after we do side by side. Now, we didn't get any information about the aging area, like where it's no. at in the warehouse or any of that kind of Let's stuff. Let's see, this little sheet she they sent us. Oh, yeah, again, I just, I, I, as soon as you showed me the bottle, even before we started, I couldn't get over how dark it was. Um, it's insanely dark. Yeah, so. But that's what that extra two years of maturation will do to a barrel in Kentucky. Well, that's why I'm wondering like, if they're putting it on low floors uh, or they're putting it on high floors and like getting a ton of heat in there. I don't know. I wish I had that information for you, but I don't. For me, there's definitely like a higher concentration of alcohol on the nose as well than there was. There's still 93. Right. But it's just, I'm curious, again, that could go back to the, if you age it on a higher floor, you're getting a ton of wood action, but you're also getting a lot of evaporation. 
And so you're getting that, that higher concentration. So they're maybe adding less water where they brought it down to 93. Like if it came out of the barrel pretty high, high and they brought it down. Cause it almost, to me, almost has some of that similar vibe that 1920 has, where you get a little bit of that. Hmm. That's really interesting. I get a lot of barbecue and, you know, like hot, not like hot sauce, but you know, like peppers and like barbecue spices kind of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of that, that that sweet heat, if you will. Yes, almost, like almost like a, a like a nice hot sauce or a, a good a good barbecue. Sauce. I know exactly what you're talking about. Because again, you're in that heavily char, which comes into that smoke profile you get from barbecue meat. Um, it's very light. This is this has hardly anything on the back palate for me. I get a ton on the front, like right when you put it in your tongue, um, into the middle a little bit, but it, it just kind of fades off. It sits there, it's, just, it's still sitting on my tongue. Uh, See, no, I get a lot of that white pepper ethanol even mm -hmm. on the back palate. I feel that spice. It's very interesting. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm definitely drinking. I'm definitely well, buying it. Yeah. Good luck buying it. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck finding it. Uh, it yes. was available and might still have some availability at the distillery store as well as some Kentucky retailers. It does come in a 375, I believe. Mm -hmm. Usually, a lot of their 117s are coming in. They're doubling the bottling by splitting them in half. Yeah. yeah. Which is what a lot of the brown home brands give for their LTS. Same even with the, even the double, double oak Woodford. When they Originally first, was 375. When they first yeah. always a 375 at the distillery only. Um, I think they've expanded into some Kentucky retailers as well. So basically what we're saying is if you go on to the illegal secondary market, you might be able to find one, but good luck. Don't tell me why I said that. Even in uh, aftermarket stores and, you know, auction sites and what have you, I have not seen a 117 come up, not even good. since they came out. I saw one, I saw the High Angel share early on, but yeah, I haven't seen anything since then in terms of the, the Warehouse K series. That was or, really good. Yeah. Or any of those other ones uh, floating around. So I'm curious if people are just grabbing them as collector items and sitting on them. Um, that would make sense because it would. they're such a limited series. Of yeah. Things. Someone wants I mean, to collect the whole series of those in Kentucky and then turn around and sell the whole set as a set. I'm going back to the other 1910 now. Oh yes. Circle back to that last drop. Let me do a little quick cleanse. So have you ever given thought to the fact that sometimes aging extra doesn't do anything to benefit the product? So like, for example, there's a great I've debate. I've never thought of that. Like, but that, it makes perfect sense. That 15 year kind of is like the max that bourbon can age and beyond that it gets yeah. too much. I mean, like people debate like, oh, the, the Van Winkle 15 year is the best because the 2023 is aged too much. And there was some 20 year stuff that was put out by Orphan Barrel that was almost like so much oak that it was it was too much aging. Like you're just chewing on a barrel. Yeah, you, you basically get it becomes barbecue and, and wood and that's all you're tasting and you lose a lot of that, that nuance that makes a product. Is that what you're saying? What's the extra, extra Well, I'm just saying oil? like something to think about going back to this first sample of the extra old to think about maybe did this get too much oak or not? And the answer could be no. Just posing a question. Interesting question. I like that idea. Because even on the nose, there's so much more action on the extra old. Um, uh, actually, I disagree. For me, on the nose of the extra, extra old, I'm getting... It's kind of like... Paprika spice, almost. You're, yeah, you're still getting some of that, that barbecue cooking spice, right? Like yeah. It's paprika and onion powder and... Maybe even like brown sugar cinnamon, which is very common in, in barbecue spices. But for me with the extra old, it's just so delicate. And there's just so many like light nuanced flavors that are just really subtle and, 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 and nice. Whereas these ones for the extra, extra old are just a lot more intense. I do like, again, back to the extra old, where I said it was just really delicate on the front of my palate. It's just kind of, it's like putting a piece of candy on your tongue and kind of letting it, it, it soak in. So you just get, again, it's not butterscotch candy per se, but you get that element of, like, of like a light, butterscotch, subtle, just delicate that you put in your mouth and it sort of melts into your tongue, which I really do like. Um, and then it just kind of sits there. And it's yeah, for the XXO, I get that butterscotch candy, 
But it doesn't quite melt into your tongue. Yeah. What it does is it coats your tongue, rather. Sure. It does melt. It does give you that, you know, sweet, kind of almost a little bit savory. That's one of the better sure. than butterscotch. But instead of melting and just kind of dissipating and melt, mixing with your saliva, it just coats your tongue and gives you just this be No, I came up beautiful. It's really kind of actually frustrating astringency. Now, yeah. one I love astringency when it hits me around the gums, but on the palate, I don't like it so much. Right, and this isn't hitting in the gums, it's hitting more in the tongue, right, for me? 100% on the tongue. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's sitting to the sides and it's trying to get to the gums, but I think it, it, it goes away before it makes it to the to the sides of my mouth. Yeah. And the way that it coats, um, definitely making my mouth water um, in, a, in a nice way. Just adding some of that. Again, and I told you before, for, so for me, I think right now, I have to say, I'm leaning towards the extra old versus the extra, extra so old. So am I. Um, in terms of just like- I actually it. prefer the regular XO versus the double X. Which goes back to my question of, can something be too oaked. I mean, that's a common question. I think if someone has, I don't know if this is too oaked necessarily, but I definitely think that in this case, the oak did more to hinder it than it did to help it. And I wouldn't go ahead. I wouldn't call it too oaked. Sure. I don't feel like I'm chewing on barrel. Of course. And I think this is tough too because we're doing side by side. If I pulled that out by itself and drank it, I'd be like, wow, this is great. But now that I'm putting it against something, I think it, it really shows where their line should be in terms of how much aging they need to do. Um, and I, I always, and again, I always encourage people at home watching to do side by side, do blind tastings. And you think you like something, put it against something you maybe aren't sure. Do it blind, have someone pour for you and then try them all, rate them and then see what they are. Because sometimes if we our, add more sample of extra old. Our opinions can be jaded by thinking we like what the label is. Yeah. I mean, that's why blind tastings are existing competitions, so that you don't see the label or the packaging mm -hmm. or know the price point even. I mean, well, in competitions, it's like, you know, you have like, you know, this spirit and this price category, price range, sure. but you don't know how much it is. Of course. I'm gonna well, this extra, extra old. I'm going to finish my 1910 extra old. I already <laughs> Mine's long gone. <laughs> I want to go back to the extra, extra old. Ryan, thanks for joining me as always. Thanks for having me, Sam. Colonel Sam Nash Green, Scribe of Spirits over here. The one and only. Cheers.